Hello garden lovers. Pepper and chili season is right around the corner. And for the last month and a half, we have been getting all of our pepper varieties that we will be growing this year seeded under grow lamps and on heat mats and then moved into the greenhouse. And look at all these beauties. We have so many varieties that we're growing this year. So if you love peppers and chilies, then hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified. We grow hundreds of peppers and chilies every year. And starting soon, we will be sharing a few varieties each week that we are growing. They will be short five minute videos talking about the pepper variety, the flavor, their heat index, the conditions they like to grow in, and their health benefits. We have some very exciting and unique varieties to share with you, like this habanada pepper. This is our first time growing this variety. Very excited because one of our favorite flavors now is habanero, and this is a heatless habanero. We grow jalapenos year round, so excited to try Craig's Grande Jalapeno. The description says it's a big fat jalapeno. Sounds perfect for poppers. Also excited to try this chocolate habanero. It says it's hotter than the red savina and has unique earthy and smoky undertones. I think this pepper is gonna be my favorite this season. What a beautiful pepper. Brush strokes of tangerine and violet bursting with habanero level heat. All right, time to get these seeds in their little cells where they'll grow for the next six weeks. Then we will get them transplanted into their own individual four inch pots. We cover the seeds with this Jiffy seed starting mix. Soil tends to have little wood chunks that may deter the seedling from popping up. This mix is a nice fine material. Here are some of the extreme heat varieties we're growing this year. We've been having a great time making our own spices. Another chili we grow year round are Thai chilies. Excited to try this variety given to me by my brother-in-law for Christmas. It says best pepper for cool night conditions. We have a Thai chili plant that we overwintered outside and I bet this variety will do even better in our area. Here are some of our homegrown habanero seeds. What a cute little jar. Yes, we are growing way too many habanero plants. We are always keeping our eye out for varieties rich in antioxidants. Look at this beautiful black Hungarian pepper. Not only is it full of antioxidants, the description says delicious Hungarian heirloom pepper, black fruit shaped like jalapenos, mildly hot, delicious flavor. Early jalapeno is a staple jalapeno variety we grow year round. We love growing new varieties, but sometimes we don't love the new varieties that we try. This jalapeno variety produces consistent, large, delicious jalapenos. If you follow our channel, you know that we are huge green chili lovers. We grow hundreds every year. We get them roasted, peeled, and frozen. And this was a big disappointment. We got these hatch green chilies from a local store, harvested the seeds, and unfortunately, the germination rate was terrible. We got three plants out of sowing about 35 seeds. Thankfully, we still had some seeds from some homegrown green chilies, so we will still have plenty of plants this year. Time to get these guys a nice soaking before they go under the grow lights and on the heat mat. We make sure that all the soil in the cell is completely wet before getting them on the heat mat. It's been a little over a week and these little guys are popping up. We like to give them a diluted Dr. Earth liquid fertilizer mix once a week at this stage to promote strong, healthy seedlings. 
Make sure to check out our video that we did last year on how we keep our pepper and chili plants healthy. I will attach the link below in the description. This is my favorite part. It never gets old. I love seeing the little seedlings popping out of the soil. And during germination time, it's important to keep the soil moist. You can see here, this soil looks lighter than the rest of the soil around it. This soil has dried out, and if it stays dry too long, it can damage germination. Germination was so fast with these homegrown red habaneros. And some of these other guys are quite a bit slower. And here is one of the three hatch green chili seeds that actually germinated. I am determined to grow the largest green chili I can off this plant, harvest the seeds, and grow these super huge green chilies next season. We would love to hear what area on the planet you are growing in. Drop us a comment below and make sure to subscribe to our channel. We will be announcing some giveaways this summer that you don't want to miss. Now we will share the setup we have for our pepper and chili germination. We position the light fixture about three inches above the cells. We are using 5T grow lights. This is a Duralux light fixture, the DL844. These pepper and chili seedlings in this video were started mid-January. We have another round under the grow lamp and on the heat mat now because our nighttime lows are still in the mid 30s to low 40s. And pepper and chili plants require warm soil to germinate. So we use the Viso Sun heat mats to heat up the soil. They do an excellent job, but you got to keep an eye on the soil because it can dry out fast. We have the heat mats plugged into the light fixture and the light fixture is on this timer and it's set for 12 hours on, 12 hours off. As I mentioned earlier, we only use the Jiffy Mix seed starter on top of the seeds because the number of seedlings that we start would be pretty expensive if we just use the Jiffy Mix in the cells. So our seed start mixture is Edna's Best by E.B. Stone. We use some compost by Bumper Crop. We put in some earthworm castings. See the bottom of the bag was chewed up by rats. And we add azomite because peppers and tomatoes need the extra calcium for cell wall development. So here we are, six weeks from germination. This clip was filmed February 25th, and you will see on the labels that they were seeded on January 16th. Time to get them another diluted Dr. Earth liquid fertilizer feeding. Going to get them thinned out to one plant per cell and get them transplanted into their own four inch pot. You'll notice that I missed off the tops of the leaves after feeding them the liquid fertilizer because the liquid fertilizer will sit on the leaf tops and burn the leaves from the sun. They will get a liquid fertilizer feeding once a week and stay in the greenhouse where they're warm and cozy until they're ready to go in their permanent growing location. If you love growing peppers and chilies, I will attach a link in the upper right hand corner that you could check out. It's titled Strongest, Healthiest Pepper, Chili, and Tomato Transplants for Large Harvests. All right, that's it for now. Remember, something doesn't come from nothing. I hope you guys enjoy your week and enjoy your garden.